Hi. Piloted walking vehicles, sometimes known as mechs, have appeared in a great many different science fiction settings over the years. The earliest example I've been able to find goes back to 1868 with the steam-powered Man of the Prairies by Edward S. Ellis. A little after that, there was the Steam House, which featured uh, a steam-powered piloted mechanical elephant. And, of course, quite famously, uh, H.G. Wells wrote The War of the Worlds, which featured Martian fighting machines that were monstrous tripods taller than the highest steeple. And this papercraft model here uh, is the, a version of the depiction of them for the Jeff Wayne's musical version of War of the Worlds. Uh, since then, of course, they've famously appeared in Star Wars with uh, examples such as this ATST Walker and the larger ATAT. And in Aliens, Ripley made use of the power loader to duel the alien queen at the end of the film. There have also been toy ranges such as Tommy's Zoids and also the Exo Squad range of toys, and both of these were turned into cartoons as well. Uh, if you've not seen either of those, I suggest you look them up. They are very entertaining. And in Wargaming, of course, there are several versions. Uh, here we have a Raven Battle Strider from the Cryomech game and a Sentinel from Warhammer 40,000. I also have the Joy Toy version of the Invicta Tactical Warsuit at the back. Now, I have decided for this video, I am going to create a scratch-built generic mech, uh, and I'm, this is going to accompany the previous scratch-built sci-fi vehicles I've done. I'm going to produce instructions that will show you how to reproduce it as far as the core and then you'll be able to decorate it and customize it according to your own requirements. If you've seen my videos before you'll know I like to start a modeling project with some rough sketches of what it is I'm intending to build and for this particular project I've made two and the first is sort of very vertical humanoid style mech, whereas the second is the more sort of hunched over chicken walker style. Uh, but for this video and project, I am going to be doing the first of these, the humanoid design. The chicken walker may be done at a later date. After I've got this sketch now, I moved on to a three dimensional prototype and I used cardboard first. And initially I thought maybe the body looked a little small in these sketches, so I made some that are bigger. But then I decided once I saw them in three dimensions, they were getting a bit too big and the mech was going to be a lot bigger than I really wanted it. I wanted something quite lightweight. So I went back to the size of the sketch roughly and I have produced this three dimensional cardboard prototype. Uh, and happy with the rough size and shape of this, I then proceeded to duplicate it in Plasticard. And this is the basic core of the vehicle. And the instructions I produce will show you how to get this far. Because after this point, it will be uh, up to you how you decide to decorate it. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to turn this from a very basic outline shape into a fully detailed mech. And here we have not one but two fully detailed scratch built mechs. Uh, and I've built two so that I can show off the variations in weapons fits that you might want to consider. Uh, this one uses a simple plastic card box assembly to create multi-launch missile launchers. Uh, both are fitted with um, a sentry gun from the EM4 range. It's the same bit of a miniature model that I've used on other scratch-built military vehicles. Of course, there's a wire antenna and the extendable uh, optical sensor made using a BB gun pellet, a bit of a cotton board and a bit of a drinking straw. The engine block on the back is detailed with plastic card and also with some wire mesh. Um, other than that, I think that's it. it's all plastic card details used on both of these models. Uh, the second one 
has two different weapons. It's got a large calibre cannon under one arm, uh, made with some various thicknesses of plastic card for the barrel and also the back of the gun. Whilst on the other arm, I've used several pieces of plastic tubing, uh, all of the same diameter, to produce this multiple barreled cannon. And actually, here is another non plastic card detail because to produce the ammunition belt for the rapid firing cannon, I have used a piece of computer ribbon cable. Now, one thing I would like to point out about both of these is where the joints would be. So here and here on the legs and here on the arms, I have produced these sort of protruding armour plates to cover them. Uh, now on an actual sort of walking vehicle, the joints would be particularly vulnerable. And by putting uh, details on like this, it not only gives the impression that the weak points on the vehicle have been protected, but it also hides the fact that, in fact, under here is just a single solid piece of plastic card. And so there we have two fully built scratch built mechs. And now I just need to paint them both. Okay, and here we have the two painted mechs, and I've used the same Castellan green base coat with sepia wash that I normally use on these scratch-built miniatures that I've done so far. Uh, then with various details picked out, I've given them sort of headlights or running lights on the torsos, and just given a, a black coat for the cockpit to make it look like it's made some sort of armoured transparent material material the give the the pilot the ability to see everything that's going on around him uh, and then certain parts also picked out in some metallic colors as well and so these two models are now ready to be added to my collection i'm going to end though with a quick change of scenery and the addition of not only some of my future Warriors uh, collection of miniatures, uh, but also uh, some more of the various scratch-built vehicles I've constructed over the years, which appear in some previous videos, um, so that you can see just how these mechs fit into the range I've been creating so far. Uh, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this. I will be putting instructions uh, and templates up on my website as I've done with the previous uh, models I've built. These will show you how to make the basic core uh, and then you can decide what details you want to add for yourself. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. Bye.